the cookie crumbled. The true and not so true stories of the invention of the chocolate chip cookie by Gilbert Ford. Do these look familiar? Ever wonder where these round, crispy, chocolatey pieces of perfection come from? Everyone agrees that the chocolate chip cookie was invented by Ruth Wakefield. But how did she do it? That's where the story gets messy. I'm here to show you some ways it could have happened. So sit back, grab a cookie, and let me sweep up the crumbs. Ever since Ruth was old enough to hold a spoon, she was helping out her grandma in the kitchen. She'd carefully pour the scalding cheese into a rum tum ditty and measure with precision the flour in her applesauce cakes. You see, to Ruth, cooking was a science, and the kitchen was her lab. So no one was surprised when Ruth went off to college to study nutrition. A after she finished school, Ruth went on to teach cooking in high school. Although she enjoyed leading her classes, she hungered for something more. Then Ruth met Kenneth Wakefield, who shared her passion for cooking. He quickly became the apple of her eye, and it wasn't long before they were married and cooking up a plan to run their own restaurant. But their plan didn't fall into place until four years later. It was 1930, the beginning of the Great Depression. And with a young son in tow, it was not an ideal time to open a restaurant. But when our lovebirds found an old toll house in Whitham, Mass., they knew it was now or never. Ruth and Kenneth scraped up their savings, signed on the dotted line, and fixed the place up, naming it the Toll House Inn. Ruth didn't let hard times stop her from opening her restaurant. She ran a tight ship, planning the menu and doing most of the cooking herself, while Kenneth ordered food and helped out in the kitchen. Ruth's staff said she was one tough cookie to work for. She demanded that the servers set the tables flawlessly, and she even measured the distance between the fork and the plate for accuracy. As diners began to trickle into the Toll House Inn, Ruth's hard work sure paid off. She sent her customers home with full stomachs and a craving to come back for more. Now here's the part where Ruth invents the chocolate chip cookie. The trouble is, no one can agree on how she did it. Here are three ways the story has been told. The disaster. As one tale goes, it all began when Ruth was whipping up a batch of butter drop dew cookies. Her mixer was spinning dough like a tornado, and it knocked a Nestle chocolate bar off the shelf. The chocolate fell right into the mix, and wow, what a disaster. But the grill man suggested that Ruth bake the cookies anyway. Ruth gave it a try, and when she pulled those cookies from the oven, she discovered pure heaven. The substitute. Ruth was in a hurry. Our talented chef had forgotten to order baking chocolate, so she improvised by taking an ice pick to a Nestle chocolate bar. She thought by sprinkling the chunks into the dough, the chocolate would melt evenly. But when she pulled the cookies from the oven, boy, was she wrong. They're ruined, she cried. Of course, someone else in the kitchen took a bite and said, Mmm. When Ruth decided to try one herself, she agreed. The Mastermind While returning from a trip to Egypt, Ruth was pondering an old cookie recipe when inspiration struck her. Ruth got back to her kitchen and went straight to work mixing up the dough. Then she deliberately took an ice pick to that chocolate bar. Ruth dropped the chunks into the mix. After the timer dinged, Ruth pulled the cookies from the oven and looked at her invention. It was exactly how she imagined it. She shut her eyes, took a bite, and savored the warm, gooey chocolate as it melted right in her mouth. So which version do you believe? The disaster? Although it is possible that the candy bar fell straight into the dough, this tale seems a little half-baked. The substitute. Do you think that Ruth, who went to school and studied nutrition, didn't know how semi-sweet chocolate would melt when she cooked it? That's hard to swallow. But here's some food for thought. The mastermind. Isn't it possible that Ruth actually knew what she was doing? Anyone who knew Ruth would tell you she had a reputation for inventing delicious desserts at the Toll House Inn, and she traveled far and wide to find new recipes. If you ask me, Ruth deserves some credit. She was one smart cookie. Now let's get back to the story. Ruth placed the cookies on a platter, took a deep breath, and held them high. Then she marched into the dining room and presented her dessert to the customers. The diners pushed back their plates and reached for a cookie. The cookies were a hit! Word spread about Ruth's Toll House chocolate crunch cookies, and folks drove from miles around to try one. So Ruth added more tables and expanded her restaurant. People begged Ruth for her recipe, and she didn't mind sharing it one bit. She even sent it to the newspaper. Soon, everybody in Boston was baking Toll House chocolate crunch cookies. But it wasn't until Ruth was interviewed on the Betty Crocker radio show that word really spread. Now bakers all across the nation were talking about Ruth's cookies. Meanwhile, the managers at the Nestle headquarters scratched their heads at the spike in sales of their candy bars. When they discovered that the Oz was Ruth's chocolate crunch cookies, they begged for her recipe. 
Ruth gave it to them, and Nestle began to produce chocolate chips designed specifically for Ruth's cookies. And Ruth? Legend has it she was awarded a lifetime supply of Nestle's chocolate. By the 1940s, every grocery store in America carried the Toll House cookie recipe on each bag of Nestle's chocolate chips. From kitchen to kitchen across the country, cookies were baking. After a long day in her kitchen, Ruth was able to sit and enjoy the sweet taste of success in all its crunchy, gooey, chocolatey perfection. And that, my friends, is how the cookie crumbled. You have been listening to How the Cookie Crumbled, the true and not-so-true stories of the invention of the chocolate chip cookie by Gilbert Ford.